Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. I'm here to deliver something to you, and the delivery includes a, let's see what's in the thing. Oh, five rules of forearm training to get jacked forearms. Yeah, needy forearms, just like all the girls love. Maybe the guys, old folks maybe like them. I don't know who likes big forearms. I'm sure as hell on that list. We got five rules as to how you train your forearms. They're helpful hints for your success. Rule number one is generally speaking, higher reps, sets of 15 to 20 to 25 to 30, tend to work better than lower reps on forearm exercises. Why? Because it just doesn't take you a long time to do a wrist curl. Muscles respond to a certain amount of stimulus with a certain amount of time. Your muscles can't count they don't know how to count reps, but they do have sensors for how much metabolite is secreted, how much tension uh, mo molecular machinery is pulled on. And the longer it's pulled on, the more signaling it does. So they do have a sort of way to sense time. And so if you do sets of 10 with squats, that could take you a minute. If you do sets of 10 with forearm curls, that could take you like 10 seconds. And your body's like, oh, oh, was there a growth stimulus there? I just turn the machinery on. I don't really know what happened. So maybe if you do sets of 15, 20, 25, 30, you can get a growth stimulus that lasts 30, 45 seconds or something like that, and then you're in the money and every set is high quality. Rule number two, short rests. Your forearms do not require three minutes to get back their recovery. If you just wait long enough until you don't have any pain from lactic acid in your forearms after last set and you're feeling pretty strong, go. That could be as little as five or 10 seconds between sets, especially if you do dumbbell curls and you alternate, you can just alternate, 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 alternate. And you say, but hold on, Dr. Mike, won't I gas out and the systemic fatigue will be bad? If you gas out from doing one arm, dumbbell, forearm curls, go see a doctor, holy shit. Number three, relative to other muscles. Tons of sets and tons of frequency. Your forearms can recover like crazy. Start with very little. Start with one set twice a week. And if you couldn't recover, go to two sets twice a week. And after six weeks of working up to six sets every, every time, twice a week, that's 12 total. Next mesocycle, try three of those actual sessions. And then you can end up to something like 18 sets and eventually four sessions a week, 24 sets total, you say, but well, hold on, how can my body recover from that? Well, your forearm muscle is not the biggest muscle in the body or the biggest muscle group, and it just doesn't take a long time to recover. It's also insanely well vascularized, so it has an easier time recovering still. It is slower twitch because you use your forearms all day, every day. Your back isn't used as often. It's more fast twitch. It's uh, gonna take more damage from exercise, require more time to recover. Your forearms can recover just fine. Now, here's the thing, when you're not actively trying to make them bigger. When they need a break, you can go down to just once or twice a week training for forearms with just a few sets. Or even if you do lots of grip work and back work and stuff like that, deadlifting, you can do zero forearm work at all. And most of the time, they'll stay roughly the same size. So you're not supposed to train your forearms four or five days a week with six sets each time all the time, but some of the time in clusters and waves of higher volume, that's how you can make a big difference to how big your forearms are. Rule number four. Try, if you really care about your forearms being bigger, to train them first on leg days and push days because they don't interfere with what's happening next. If you have a big forearm pump, it doesn't change your leg day, it doesn't change your push day much. You can't do that before bicep days or back days because it absolutely will take a huge chunk out of your bicep workout and your back workout in most circumstances. So don't do that. But the thing is, because we think of forearms as related to biceps and back, which they kind of are, they're part of the pulling complex, we end up usually saving forearm training for after we've done back and biceps, and they're so tired. Your training is good, but it's not great. It's just a little too much going through the motions and not enough really high intensity. To keep the intensity high, try training them first before legs and, and or before your, your pushing workouts, chest and triceps and stuff, so then you can get some high quality weeks of progression with forearms first, with high energy, with a huge stimulus, and they'll grow more. Lastly, do not fall for the BS that is, hey, listen, if you want bigger, bigger forearms, just do your back work without straps. And if you're fucking using straps, brother, you just, it's your crush for a weak link. That is nonsense. It's ego bro bullshit. If you need to for your delts and for your back, 
to use straps so that your delts and your back are the respective limiting factors in delt and back work, use straps, use chalk, use especially VersaGrips. I use the VersaGrip Pro. I'm still not sponsored by VersaGrips. Please sponsor me, VersaGrip. I'm tired of paying 20 bucks for one of your products every four years because they work so good, I barely need to replace them. I suppose nobody really needs a VersaGrip sponsorship. Go out and get you some VersaGrips and then use them when you need them. And then people will say, but what about your forearms? Aren't they gonna get stronger? Yes, when you do forearm curls and other forearm techniques to make them bigger in their own time. We don't take the lunge movement or the hip thrust and tell someone, hey, you better put your knees into it more because you'll, you, otherwise your quads will get small. What? But we have other movements for quads. The back work and the shoulder work that you're doing that you need straps on is for back and shoulders. So use those VersaGrips to make sure that the back and shoulders get hit the most as they're the limiting factor because your grip is tight and solid. Will that let you train your grip as much? No, but these exercises aren't supposed to train your grip to begin with. You're supposed to be doing grip exercises for that, goddammit. So work diligently on those and use straps when you need them for the other muscle groups and you'll get the best of all worlds. And if you want even better of all worlds, give, our th give your thought, rather, we already have our thought here, but subscribing to the members section. It's more money, but you get more videos and it's only a little bit of money and you get a lot more videos and they're nerdy and super sciencey and stuff. So if you train other people, if you happen to be a personal trainer yourself or an online coach, maybe something to think about. And if you wanna take your results to the next, next level, the Team Full ROM Forum through RP is a really, really big deal. We've got video review on there where myself and Jared Feather and a bunch of other folks review your videos. We can review your physique. There's tons of programs included for the price. There's tons of diets included for the price. We have a ton of fun on the forum. Every Wednesday, we compare dicks. Like it's just pictures of dicks and you just get to rate them. And it's not even anonymous. It's just right through your profile. I'm kidding about that last part or am I? See you guys in the forum and I'll see you next time for another video.